हेलो एवरीवन, आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस बायोटेक्निका यूट्यूब चैनल गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन। हाउ आर यू ऑल वेलकम बैक प्लीज कंफर्म इफ यू कैन हियर मी एंड सी मी ऑल ऑफ यू प्लीज कंफर्म so we all know that today is a doctor's day so who is the doctor the one who performs an important and plays a vital role in our life so here i would like to wish you all a very happy doctor's day to all the doctors and the one who is there in the class because you are going to be a future doctor so i wish you all the best happy doctor's day to everyone because you are going to play a very important role in our life so yes happy doctors day yes so i will be waiting for one or two minutes and then i'll start with the lecture so today we are going to learn about molecular basis of inheritance how the genes are inherited from one generation to another and under this topic we are going to specifically deal about the replication how does the dna replicate how does a copy of dna is formed in the body so we are going to learn about replication its mechanisms what are the enzymes needed for this process and what all the background process that is what called as semi conservative mechanism that is really needed for the replication process so i request all of you to stay tuned and connected till the last part of this video or lectures because at the last you will be getting some freebie downloads where you will find a link for the time table like if you are preparing for ne uh, 17 july you are having your final exam so if you want to really crack the exam or you want to know about the schedule what schedule is needed for the last minute revision so you will be getting a schedule if you are pursuing your uh, schooling or if you have pass outs but doing a neat preparation so you will be getting that link and visit that link you will be find finding a course or the schedule for the preparation so stay tuned and connected till the last part of this lecture so i hope i should start the lecture now i hope every one of you are there and uh, along with your ncert books pen and paper so let's start with the lecture so before coming to replication because we are going to learn about dna ka replication so before studying about replication it is very important to understand what is dna so you all know that dna it is a genetic material why genetic because this material a nucleic acid which is going to be transmitted or inherited from one generation to another so it is genetic material in most of the eukaryotes so we have two kinds of organism one is prokaryote and the other one is eukaryote pro stands for primitive pro stands for primitive so they do not have that primitive true nucleus they have primitive nucleus that too in the form of nuclei so they do not have a nuclear membrane around the nucleus and that too their dna is not that advanced that is why they are not having dna as a genetic materials or if they are having that can be in the form of nuclei so rna is the mainly genetic material that is found in lower prokaryotes as well as some uh, unicellular organisms so dna it is a genetic material in eukaryotes so how dna is formed dna is a polymer of nucleotides so when the nucleotides are arranged in a linear fashion they form dna so n number of nucleotide together they organize and they form a dna that is one of the genetic material in eukaryotes now what is nucleotide i told that nucleotide will polymerize to form dna but what is nucleotide when pentose sugar that is a deoxyribose sugar nitrogenous bases and phosphate group they together assemble and organize they form one nucleotide so here you can see this is a phosphate sugar 
pantose sugar that is a deoxyribose sugar and with this with the help of glycosidic bond some sugars are attached some uh, bases are attached that can be in the form of a t g c that is adenine thymine cytosine and guanine so how these bases are arranged how this nitrogenous bases are arranged in dna they are arranged with the help of hydrogen bonds so you all may be knowing that between adenine and thymine they are having double hydrogen bond whereas in guanine and cytosine they are having triple hydrogen bond that is how the nitrogenous bases are being stabilized in dna so this is a pantose sugar that is a deoxyribose sugar so you may have a question from here what is the name of the sugar that is present in dna so it is deoxyribose sugar and that is why dna full form is deoxyribonucleic acid because it is a acidic component acidic factor that is containing a deoxyribose sugar and also they are having a nitrogenous basis that too in the form of a t g c and along with it they also have a phosphate backbone so how this sugar and phosphate backbone are connected so these are connected with the help of phosphodiester bond how these are connected with the help of phosphodiester bond this bond is only known to connect the pantose sugar that is a deoxyribose sugar along with phosphate but how bases and uh, sugar molecules are connected they are connected with the help of glycosidic bond because you all know that for sugars the bond is glycoside is because glyco stand for sugar so for sugar connecting sugar and pantose sugar as well as bases the bond is glycosidic bond so i hope this slide is clear to everyone so now coming to dna replication if you have understood about dna the mechanism of dna how it is assembled in the body so it is very important and easy to understand dna replication so before going to dna replication first i'll give the background how dna replication and what all basic mechanisms undergone theories are there so this dna replication it was proved by messelson and stoll messelson and stoll so how did they start their work it was proved in 1988 so how did they start their work firstly in 1953 watson and crick they together proposed the double helical structure of dna they only gave the double helical structure of dna where they mention like dna is arranged in a helical pattern or helical fashion where they have a anti parallel polarity what is anti parallel polarity like suppose this is 5 dash and so this dna one chain of dna would be having 3 dash and the other one will have 5 3 dash and and it will have the 5 dash and at the last so 5 dash to 3 dash polarity and 3 dash to 5 dash polarity that is what called as anti parallel polarity anti means against one is going from 5 to 3 dash and the other one is arranged in the form of 3 dash to 5 dash so watson and craig they only proposed a double helical model for dna again this is a three star mark because you may get a question from here so they only proposed a double helical structure of dna but they didn't propose how did the replication process of dna is taking place inside the nucleus so to prove all these things messelson and stoll did an experiment so how they did they perform the experiment so who is going to perform this experiment for dna replication it is messelson and stoll so after 6 to 7 years these scientists perform the experiment kiska 6 to 7 year after watson and crick proposed the double helical structure of dna so these scientists perform the replication mechanism they prove the how the replication is taking place in the body so for this the microorganism that they used is e coli now what is e coli e coli is a prokaryote that is not having advanced nucleus or perfect dna because dna it is present in eukaryote so he took e coli because e coli it is a it is having a short generation time that is of 
20 minutes. So how they are generated? Suppose this is one cell. So after every generation, it will grow exponentially. Every generation, matlab, every generation would be of 20 minutes. So E. coli cell will double. So again, two will form four cell. Here also two will form two cells. So total four cells are formed. So how this is taking place? These cells are replicated in the form of exponential growth. So two to the power n. First is one cell. They will form two cell, two will form four, four will form eight, eight will form 16, 16 will form 32. That is what is called as exponential growth. So these E. coli, they were having a short generation time of 20 minutes. So it was very easy to access these uh, E. coli. So what he did actually, he took E. coli and he cultured E. coli in its medium, specific medium for E. coli. And he, the medium he provided, it was NH4Cl, that is ammonium chloride. But here, he labeled this nitrogen atom in the ammonium chloride to just see that if nitrogen is incorporated in DNA, because we have already told that DNA has nitrogenous bases. These bases, that is ATGC, would have nitrogen atom in their structure. That is why they are forming the base of the DNA. That is why they are called as nitrogenous bases because they are containing a nitrogen atom in their structure. So from where these are getting nitrogen? Obviously from the surrounding. So he proved this experiment. He provided ammonium chloride where he labeled this N nitrogen atom that is with the radioactive nitrogen. So this is called a heavier isotope of nitrogen, heavier isotope. So what will happen? E. coli will grow. Once it will grow, its DNA will be replicated. So just to see that E. coli growth happened. And after some time, 20 minutes growth will happen because it's generation time 20 minutes hai, and it will get double. So he isolated this E. coli. So interestingly, what he found when he observed the DNA structure, he got in its DNA all N15 nitrogen got incorporated. Jo bhi iska DNA structure tha, N15 got incorporated. Where it got incorporated? Into nitrogenous bases. Because bases, do, they do have nitrogen in their structure. So all the nitrogen got incorporated here. So suppose this is A, this is T, this is G, this is C. So in this, nitrogen jitna bhi hoga in case of thymine, it got labeled. So he again provided NH4Cl in the media and proceeded this again. So kya kya? Again this DNA was replicated for the next round of replication. So this is what called as first replication or first round of replication. In second round what happened? Ye dono jo DNA hai, it got separated these helix got separated. Suppose this is one helix and this is other helix. I'll explain how these are separated and how the mechanism is taking place. So the, these two strands got separated. Or ab kya hoga? Inka bhi template has strand. This is called the template strand. Now again to this one more strand will be formed. Tabhi to pura DNA complete hoga and that's how the DNA will be completed actually. So what will happen after 20 minutes? one more DNA chain will be formed. That too like this. So what is this? Now here he provided lighter isotope of nitrogen, not heavier. So he just provided 14 isotope. So normally 14 isotope is there. So this is not the heavier isotope of nitrogen. So all the DNA, they incorporated the uh, lighter version of nitrogen, that is nitrogen 14 and also here nitrogen 14. But previously it was 15 and here also 15. Again, he subjected this to next round of replication. That is what called as third round of replication. So here the product are for second round of replication. So again here, what did he use in this medium? He again used ammonium chloride. And again, this time, this nitrogen was 14 tagged. This was not the lighter version of 
uh, this was not the heavier nitrogen, but it was a lighter isotope of nitrogen. So what will happen? Like simply previously, these strands were getting separated. Here also, it will get separated. So suppose from this DNA, it will get separated. And from this DNA also, it will get separated. And again, we'll have two single strand. And to this, again, uh, anti-parallel polarity wala DNA will be formed to complete one DNA helix. Aisa hoga. So it will utilize this lighter version of nitrogen. And again, this helix will be formed. So what are you seeing here? Jaise, jaise, generation after generation barda hai, this one parental strand is conserved. And the rest of the uh, recombinant strand or the progeny strand they are forming that is new every time. So half of the strand of the DNA that are conserved. So this conserved wala pattern of DNA, it is what called as conservation process. So how it is conserved? It is half conserved because half of the new strands of DNA are formed. So half stands for semi. So semi means half. That is why this process is called as semi-conservative process. So Messelson and Stoll, they prove in their experiment that DNA, they replicate by a semi-conservative mechanism where the DNA of a parental strand are conserved in every generation. So half of a parental DNA, it will be conserved and half of the DNA will be made by a progeny itself that is a new of the progeny that is not conserved. Conserved kya hoga? That is coming since evolution. So what is coming since evolution? Jo hamare parental generation se aya. That is what called as semi-conservative model of replication. So it was proven by Messelson and Stoll in 1858 how it, it performed because they used this DNA ka structure that was given by Watson and Crick in 1953. So using this as a clue, they proved this semi-conservative model of DNA replication. So we have three models of DNA replication, conservative, semi-conservative, dispersive. So here we are going to learn about semi-conservative. That is the most accepted model. So semi-conservative model of DNA replication, it was proved by Matthew Messelson and Franklin Stoll in 1858. How did he prove that? He proved this in E. coli, that is a prokaryote. And it has a generation time of 20 minutes. So this was proved in E. coli. So E. coli is a prokaryote, but this has to be proved in eukaryote also. So Taylor et al. New scientists came and they proved this semi-conservative mechanism of DNA replication in eukaryotes. So Messelson and Stoll, they are known for Messelson and Stoll, they are known for proving this DNA replication in prokaryotes, but in eukaryotes, it was proven by Taylor at all. Or you can also say that Taylor and its colleagues. So Taylor at an, he used E. coli as a source. Masselson and Stoll used E. coli at the source, but Taylor and Al, they used Vichia Faber. But this time they used radioactive thymidine. So you can have three differences here. So in prokaryotes as well as in eukaryotes. We are going to make a tabulation for semi-conservative mechanism of DNA replication. So firstly coming the scientist name, who proved this? So for prokaryotes, who proved this? For prokaryotes, Messelson and Stoll. And for eukaryote, it was proven by Taylor et al. What did the source of organism they used for their study? source they used E. coli and here they used Vichia Faba. How did they use this organism? They marked this nitrogen as radioactive nitrogen that was marked with heavier isotope of nitrogen. 
and that is N15. But here they used, what did they use? They used thymidine and that too is a radioactive thymidine. So these are the differences how semi-conservative model of replication was proved in prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes and how this you have to revise the concepts you have to make the concepts easy this way you can make it very easy like you have the mechanism how this mechanism is taking place but the point you have to remember is like scientist the source they used and the radioactive origin so you have to recall like this you have to prepare a tabulation or some kind of easier things like that you can recall so firstly we'll see the diagram what it is saying about so it is same that i've already explained firstly he cultured this e coli and after first generation he was getting whole 1515 and heavy dna and after first generation these both dna got separated and he provide this lighter version of nitrogen and to this nitrogen version of dna or nitrogen got incorporated in dna now he was having the n15 as well as 14 hybrid but here n15 and 15 hybrid was there why n15 and 15 hybrid because these both dna were radioactive labeled in the first generation these both were n15 and 15 hybrid but later on after first generation this was further subjected to nh4cl but this time it is having 14 nitrogen so what will happen suppose this is 15 this is 15 and again this will have 14 this will have 14 so what are you seeing here you are seeing a hybrid n15 to n14 hybrid N15 and 14 hybrid. Again, if you will subject this to another round of replication, this time again it is N14. What will happen? You will have two hybrid as well as rest of the progeny DNA. How to hybrid? Suppose this is N15, N15 will come here, again N15 will come here and rest N14 will be made. So this time you will be having N14, N14 the combination just like here as well as N15, N15 ka combination. So after this, he subjected all this DNA replication to centrifugation. And what did he found? He found that he was getting three bands after centrifugation. So the medium he used for the centrifugation is cesium chloride. So this cesium chloride is known for density gradient centrifugation. So why we are going for density gradient centrifugation? Because we know that we are getting three different kinds of DNA. One is N15, N15. One is N15, N14. And the other one is N14, N14. So these are on the basis of their density. Density matla molecular weight. Why we are talking about molecular weight? Because we know that N15, it is a heavier isotope of nitrogen, whereas N14, it is a lighter isotope of nitrogen. So he performed density gradient centrifugation or quantum medium he used, he used CSCL, that is cesium chloride. So what is the name for CSCL? It is cesium chloride. So what happens when you subject this solvent on a centrifugation, it will get dissociated. CS, Cl will get dissociated. How? Because CS, Cl, CS is CS2+. plus. It will be deposited on the bottom. It will get separated and higher amount of CS will be separated here. And it will take all the heavier particles with it. So what is the heavier particle here? It is N15 and 15. So on centrifugation, what he was getting? He was getting three bands. So the lower band, which was near to the bottom or near to CS, cesium, it was N15 and 15 because it is heavier isotope. Because the principle of centrifugation is what the heavy items are there in a cell, it will get settled at the bottom. And the lighter one, there will be above the or in the supernatant or in the liquid. Whatever heavy material is there, it will get settled at the bottom. So here you will get the thin band of N15 and 15. And what are the other combination? N15 and 14 as well as N14 and 14 here. So again, you will have another band here 
that will be of and 15 as well as and 14. Why? Because here also you are having one combination of heavier isotope and the upper band would be of and 14 and 14. This is what the semi-conservative model of DNA replication. So I'm sure this is clear to everyone. If you have any doubt, so please uh, you may ask here. Hello, Silva. Welcome. Very good, Silva, is it? Vishya Fava. So now let's proceed to DNA replication process. So what is replication? Replication is a copying of DNA. Agar simple word me bolna, DNA is replication is a copying mechanism of DNA. Where one copy of DNA, like suppose this is DNA. This is DNA. So how this is replicated? These two strands will be separated. And with this, one new strand will be formed. This is what called as copying DNA. So you can clearly see that two parental strand, they are getting conserved in the next generation too. That is why it is also called as semi-conservative model of DNA replication. So what we are seeing here, this template, it is just copy by reading this parental strand. And this strand is formed by reading this parental strand. So two parental strands are there. So copying DNA strands and making a new DNA after reading the parental strand, this is what called as DNA replication. So we'll understand what is DNA replication. So if I write about DNA replication, it is a semi-conservative process. We have already studied how it is semi-conservative process because half of the DNA of parents are already conserved here. The next point is it is semi-discontinuous. And the third, it proceeds in the 5 dash to 3 dash direction. I'll explain how. I'm just writing the points. I'll explain it one by one. And the fourth, it, it proceeds bidirectionally. And fifth, it needs an enzyme called as DNA polymerase, which is the most important enzyme that is required for DNA replication. So let's see how this process is taking place. So now let's consider, suppose this is DNA. So we all know that there are two kinds of organism. One is, one is prokaryote and the other one is eukaryote. So prokaryote, they have circular DNA. What they have? They have circular DNA. And eukaryote, they have linear DNA. That DNA is arranged linearly. And here they have one origin of replication. Now, what is this origin of replication? Now, the name itself signifies the origin or the starting point from where the replication would begin. This is what called as origin of replication? Yes, correct. From where the replication would begin, this is what called as origin of replication. So, suppose this is an E. coli cell and here it will have one origin of replication. This is what called as one ori. That will uh, cause the initiation of replication process that is why it is called as origin of replication whereas in case of deed eukaryotes they are having multiple origin of replication so you can see that they are having multiple origins of replication so if i divide this replication origin in prokaryotes firstly we'll understand in prokaryotes so if i divide this replication origin i'll get this suppose i'm dividing this so what i'll get I have divided this into two structure. So if I focus one part of it, what I will get? So this I'm making it in the next slide. So suppose I have divided this. So what I will get? Y-shaped structure. Yes, I'll get because you can see here, this one side is enlarged and will give a Y-shaped structure. Now, what happens here? We know that DNA is a double helix. It will mean the helical form. So, 
to start the replication process, it is very important to separate these DNA strand. So once these DNA strand are separated, only then the process of replication will begin. As you can see here, how two are forming four because this has to be separated. So how these are separated? So this replication, it is an enzymatic process. So who is going to take care for separating these strands? It is helicase. So we'll draw helicase here. So this is the very first step that is taking place in the process of DNA replication. Binding of helicase to the DNA. So what it does actually? So suppose this is double helical DNA structure. As you can see, it has two helix. So it is called as double helical structure of DNA. I have just made it linear, not helical, just to clear you this topic. So I'm not making it helical, I'm making it linear. So double helical structure of DNA. So the very first enzyme that it would bind is helicase. Now what is the function of helicase? What is the function of helicase? It is required to break all the hydrogen bonds that are there in between the bases, in bases. So you all know that if this is DNA, it would have nitrogenous bases in between. As I've shown in the first slide, it would have A that will bind to T, G that will bind to C with a triple bond. So what does this double and triple bond? They are nothing, just hydrogen bond. So how these uh, nitrogen bases are held together in D DNA? They are held together by a hydrogen bond. So it is very important to break these hydrogen bonds because once this hydrogen bond will be broken, this DNA will be separated or at least it gets loosened up. So the first thing, the helicase will come that will break all the hydrogen bonds in bases. So this is the very first enzyme that is coming into play. Next, what will happen? Suppose these two strands are separated, but again, these bases are present here. Like if A is there, C, T is there, G is there, C is there. So anti-parallel polarity is there that will be present in opposite strand, but the hydrogen bond between them is already broken, but the bases are already there. Bases are still there, so they can again pair up. So isko rokne ke liye, to prevent the pairing again, there is one more enzyme that is what called as single-stranded DNA binding protein. What is the function of SSB? The second enzyme that will come into play is SSB. So what is the function of SSB? SSB stands for single stranded DNA binding protein. It will bind to both the strand and let the strand separate it. Because kya hoga? if the strand will come closer to each other, they again will pair. Because the nitrogenous bases are still there. They are still there, but only the helicase has broken all the hydrogen bonds that are there in between. But the bases are still there. They can still form the hydrogen bond and pair up. So single-stranded DNA binding protein, they maintain the separation between bases. They maintain the separation between bases. So how this separation is maintained? They help to prevent the separation and they help the DNA in single state. Single state means separated state. So again, yaha pe bhi bind karega and single stranded DNA will bind. Now what will happen? This helicase will move further and will open the DNA. Ye helicase will further move and open the DNA. But to break all the hydrogen bonds, it is very important to release the strands or tension in the DNA. Because you all know that the nylon ka wire, how these are entangled. Jo nylon ka wire hota hai, wo kaise aapas mein tangled hota hai. So to release all the stress, the one enzyme would come into play that is what known as DNA gyrase. So what is the function of DNA gyrase here? DNA gyrase just play a role to release all the tensions in the DNA. Once these tensions are released, what kind of tension? It will unfold the DNA because DNA is folded in the form of nylon wire or in a helical structure. So it is very important to release first all the tension to unfold these wires. 
first the wires are unfolded then only helicase will come into play and it will break the hydrogen bonds between bases so it will release all the tensions here so now the dna get unfolded helicase will bind to it it will break all the hydrogen bonds in between and to prevent the further pairing between these bases single stranded dna binding protein will bind so that these strands should not pair up again so now what will happen now starts the process of dna replication so what is the main enzyme that is playing a role in dna replication so it is dna polymerase so DNA polymerase is an enzyme that has not the ability to initiate a DNA replication itself because DNA replication, then how it is initiated? It is initiated with the help of primers. So what are primers? Primers are short stretch of RNA molecule or DNA molecule that are synthesized in complementary to the DNA. So suppose this is a parental strand that is having 3 dash to 5 dash polarity and here 5 dash to 3 dash polarity. So I'm assuming the strands are separated by a helicase, DNA gyrase, as well as the single stranded DNA binding protein. Now coming DNA polymerase. So now say Patachala, what does it do? DNA polymerase, it will polymerize the DNA. DNA polymerases. A stands for enzyme. The enzyme which is needed for the polymerization of DNA, that is what called as DNA polymerase. So we do have three kinds of DNA polymerases in eukaryotes, sorry, prokaryotes. That is DNA polymerase 1, DNA polymerase 2, as well as DNA polymerase 3, because we are reading and studying the DNA replication process in prokaryotes. So there are three different kinds of DNA polymerase in case of prokaryotes. So we'll come into this slide. So what happens? DNA replication, it is not initiated by DNA polymerases. So who is going to start the replication? So firstly, the DNA primers or the RNA primers are synthesized. So who is going to synthesize these primers? Again, enzyme. Which enzyme? That is what called as primase. So who is going to synthesize this primer? Primase. So primase will come here and synthesize this short stretch of RNA primer. Kitane basis ka hota hai RNA primer? It is of 8 to 10 base pairs. So once DNA polymerase will get the help of RNA primers or DNA primers that are synthesized with the help of primase enzyme, it will start the replication process. So guys, you all know that replication starts or it proceeds in a 5 dash to 3 dash direction. The application proceeds in a 5 dash to 3 dash direction. So here, suppose this is 3, 5, 3 dash and so it would be 5 dash and. And complementarity maintained rega because it has anti-parallel polarity. So suppose this is 3 dash and so it should have 5 dash and or here what will happen? 3 dash. But I told the DNA it is always synthesized in 5 dash to 3 dash direction. Star mark. You may have a question from here. And if you see the last previous year question trend, you may find the repeated question from this line. The DNA synthesis or the RNA synthesis, it is always taking place in the 5 dash to 3 dash direction. It is an absolute statement. It is not going to change in any kind of organism or in any situation. It is always 5 dash to 3 dash. So suppose 3 dash to 5 dash. If we are considering only one strand, Suppose we are considering this strand. So, what will happen? Complementarity DNA will be formed. Yes, it will form. This direction kya hona chahi? 5 dash to 3 dash. Suppose this primer, it is 5 dash to 3 dash. Now, DNA polymerase will come and it will stretch this primer and it will add nucleotides and synthesize the DNA. So, what will happen? If you see the upper stand, 3 dash to 5 dash tha, this may 5 dash to 3 dash DNA has already been made. Again, you can see the anti-parallel polarity, yes. 3 dash to 5 dash, 5 dash to 3 dash. So this is the very first strand, this is formed in the DNA replication. 
so what about the lower strand so you can see the lower strand if i make a uh, or zoom this diagram so this is 5 dash to 3 dash so what will happen suppose if you synthesize the primer from here agar yahan pe primer synthesize hua so this will go in this direction so 5 dash to 3 dash but you can see here this time the polarity is not maintained because 5 dash to 3 direction ye bhi run ho hai, parental strand and here also this is running in 5 dash to 3 direction to yahan pe kya hoga we have to erase this suppose if we are making the rna primer here again it would be in 5 dash to 3 dash yahan se chalega it will be proceeded here again this is in 5 dash to 3 dash or parental be 5 dash to 3 dash hai. again anti parallel polarity is not maintained because we know that anti parallel polarity it is 5 dash to 3 dash and 3 dash to 5 dash then how come the lower strand will synthesize the dna now this is a problem because anti parallel polarity is not getting established so what will happen here the primer will synthesize in the opposite direction so suppose the primer is formed here but this time primer will face the 5 dash and because 3 5 dash to 3 dash maintain karke rakhna hai. and this way only the dna will be synthesized now this is the collect correct polarity because the lower strand has the polarity of 5 dash to 3 dash but this time the primer again 5 dash to 3 dash jab idhar ki taraf move karega so it will move like now the whole dna will be synthesized that will be 5 dash to 3 dash and this is what called as a anti parallel polarity अब मैंने छोटा प्राइमर क्यों बनाया? Why I have not made the primer here and the whole continuous stretch will be formed? Just because the DNA is opening, helicase has not opened up whole DNA. The tension is also being released by DNA gyrus, but this is not fully released. What will happen? The DNA polymerase will move or helicase will move and will open up the fog because the fog is not opened up at once. DNA gyrase will release the tension and the form will fog will open up very slowly. So here what will happen different stretch of DNA will be synthesized because we have to maintain the polarity. So what will happen suppose helicase has moved here it has opened this template till here. Now again one primer will be synthesized that will again proceed in this direction so as to maintain the 5 dash to 3 dash polarity. And again, what will happen? The gyrase will move further. Suppose here it is a gyrase. It is a gyrase enzyme which will release the tension. This gyrase is an example of topoisomerase. So again, gyrase is here. Helicase will move in this direction. And suppose till here the DNA helix is being opened. Again here the primer will be formed by the primase enzyme and the DNA will be synthesized. So you can clearly see that how the DNA is synthesized. So how it is being synthesized? So we again have two strands of DNA. Suppose this is 3 dash N, this is 5 dash N, this is 5 dash N, 3 dash N. Here the primal was synthesized that were proceeding the DNA strands in the forward direction. And this is how the DNA was synthesized. So this is 3 dash, 5 dash and this is 3 dash and yahan tak toh, there was no problem. The problem was in the lower strand because this was having the 5 dash to 3 dash polarity or synthesis be 5 dash to 3 dash mein hota hai. But here discontinuous, here semi-continuous synthesis of DNA is taking place because the helix is not opened up fully. The gyrus is still there who is working to release the tension. So here, if I make the helix, so gyrus is working to release the tension. And also, helicus is moving further. Jesse Jesse gyrus will move, helicus will move. Gyrus will move, helicus will move. So you will have only some part of DNA that is fully open. So there, primers will be synthesized. And again, it will proceed in this direction. Suppose the helicus is now here. It has moved further. Now helicus is moved further. So suppose now helicus is reached here so again this portion is free this dna is opened up now again one primer will be synthesized this will proceed in this direction this is what called as semi discontinuous process of dna replication because here 
the continuous strands of DNA were synthesized. You can see it was continuous, but it is discontinuous. Why discontinuous? Because the helicase was moving and we also have to maintain the anti-parallel polarity that is 5 dash to 3 dash, 3 dash to 5 dash in all the DNA structures. So this is what called as semi-discontinuous process of DNA replication. So we have already covered what is semi-conservative process of DNA replication. So DNA replication is semi-conservative. It is semi-discontinuous because the one strand that is formed is the continuous strand and the first second strand that is forming, it is a discontinuous. Short stretch of DNA fragments are being formed in the lower strand. It is proceeding in the 5 dash to 3 dash direction. Yes, the DNA synthesis will always be happening in the 5 dash to 3 dash direction. Whether it is DNA or RNA, it will only synthesize in the 5 dash to 3 dash direction. It is proceeding bidirectionally. Why bidirectionally? Because here I have divided this replication origin. So consider I have made this Y shaped structure, I have focused this structure and made like this. But what about this structure? This structure is also proceeding DNA replication. So I've just zoomed the half part of it. And how this is happening? How this is happening? This is happening like this. I've zoomed only this structure. But here also, DNA replication is being happened because the origin was like this. But I just separated or cut this origin and I zoomed this part. So this is what called as bidirectional replication because the replication is proceeded in both the direction and prokaryotes they have only one origin of replication and that too will be proceeded in both the direction. So one origin of replication, one ori side is equals to bidirectional mode of DNA replication because suppose this is one, it will be proceeded here too as well as here too. So this is what called as bidirectional mode of DNA replication. And also, now we'll see what is this. This continuous strand is also known as leading strand. And the other strand that is synthesized discontinuous, that is what called as lagging strand because it was lagging because of helicase enzyme because it was waiting for helicase enzyme as well as DNA gyrus because once DNA gyrus will relieve all the tension helicase will break all the hydrogen bonds between A, T, G, C that is nitrogenous bases only then the DNA will be synthesized. So this is what called as lagging strand. So can we say this strand as discontinuous strand? Yes, because it was not synthesized continuously. This lagging strand is also known as Okazaki fragments. Why? Because the DNA are synthesized in the form of fragment. Okazaki means small. So small fragments are synthesized in the lower strand. This is what called as Okazaki fragment but there should be a size of Okazaki fragment. Now, what is the size for the Okazaki fragment? This Okazaki fragment, they are of 1500 to 2000 base pairs. So one Okazaki fragment or one DNA fragment that is synthesized in the lower part of DNA, that would be of a, one DNA fragment would be of a 1500 to 2000 base pairs. Now, this DNA has to be joined then only it will form a continuous structure. So we'll see how this DNA is joined. So before that, we'll complete the uh, portion of this, a theoretical portion, what is replication process. So we all know that cell cycle, it consists of G1 phase, S phase, G2 phase, as well as M phase. So the in the S phase, DNA replication is taking place. Again, a star mark question, because here the examiner question asks, like DNA replication, it is taking in which phase of the cell cycle. So guys, please note it down. It is the S phase of the cell cycle because S stands for synthesis 
phase. And why it has got the name or alphabet S phase? Because here occurs the synthesis of DNA. And just because of this synthesis, it is called as S phase. So replication occurs at the S phase. It occurs with the help of DNA dependent DNA polymerase. Why DNA dependent? Because DNA polymerase, it's replicating the process, but it is requiring DNA as a template. Why DNA? Because it is taking the help of a parental strand that is also called as a template strand. And that is how the DNA is being synthesized. So it is called as DNA polymerase that is synthesizing the DNA, but taking the help of a template that is DNA dependent DNA polymerase that has a very high efficiency of synthesizing the DNA. We'll see how. So it synthesizes 20,000 bases, 2,000 bases per second. What is the speed of this DNA polymerase? So we do have three kinds of polymerases. One, two, three. The third polymerase is the main DNA polymerase, which is used for DNA replication. So what is the speed for this polymerase? It is 20,000 bases so per second. Can you imagine in one second it can it can replicate or it can pop 20,000 or 2,000 nucleotides. So it has a high rate and accuracy or if do not have the accuracy, it will lead to the mutation. So it always have a high rate because it is forming basis of 20, 000, sorry, 2,000 per second. It also has that accuracy. It is energetically expensive. Why expensive? Because here it requires the energy in the form of ATP. That is why it is called as expensive process. It cannot, it recognizes a specific sequence called ORI. What is ORI? ORI stands for origin of replication. And that is how the process of replication is taking place. It is initiated from the origin. But you know it cannot initiate the process by itself because it always needs the help of enzyme that is primase. What does the primase do? It is an enzyme which will synthesize the primers. Short primers, that is RNA primers of 8 to 10 base pairs. Once these are made, the DNA polymerase will release or synthesize the DNA according to the template or parental strand. So replication fork is formed. What is replication form? The structure that I'm making like this, that is what called as replication fork. Or you can also say that the Y-shaped structure, because if you look, it is a kind of Y-shaped, but that too is bidirectional. How bidirection? I've already explained like, if we break the ORI, that will proceed in both the direction that is what called as bidirectional. It requires enzyme called ligase to join this Okazaki fragment. I'll say how. Now what happens, this, this continuous strand of DNA synthesis has occurred. Now it requires this Okazaki fragments to join. So who is going to join this fragment? Because this discontinuous fragment, it has to be made continuous. Now here, the ligase enzyme will act. What is the function of ligase? So here, the ligase enzyme will act in the lower template. Lig means, lig means to join. So what does it do? As it has a suffix. A stands for some kind of enzyme. So this is an enzyme which is going to join this DNA. So it will join all the Okazaki fragments together. All the Okazaki fragments together. So once ligase enzyme will join all the Okazaki fragments, now this lower strand would also be a continuous strand of DNA synthesis. So I'm sure this process is clear to everyone. Subsequently, we have seen the helicase enzyme that will cleave all the hydrogen bonds between the processes. And second, single stranded DNA binding protein that will hold the separated strands to, uh, apart. Because if they come together, they will again start pairing. And the third enzyme is DNA gyrase. That is a kind of type two topo isomerase. What does it do? It will release all the tensions in a DNA it will unfold the helicals of DNA. And the fourth enzyme is primase that will synthesize a short RNA primers of 10 to 15 or 8 to 10 bases from where the DNA replication starts. Because DNA replication, it always starts from an initiative point. And what is that? It is primer because DNA polymerase cannot initiate or start this replication process itself. And ultimately, ligase come 
and join this Okazaki fragments that is that is discontinuous in the lower part of the template. So what all we have learned till now? We have learned the requirements for DNA replication. What all requirements are there? First is DNA template. It is a base for the process of replication. Suppose this is a DNA template that will get separated and complementarity to it, new base will be or DNA will be formed. That is what it is requiring DNA template or base. Second is helicase enzyme. What does it do? It opens all the DNA helix. How it is opening? It is breaking all the hydrogen bonds in between the DNA bases. It also requires the single-stranded DNA binding proteins. What does it do? It stabilizes the DNA template. How? It holds the separated DNA strand so that it should not pair. So it should bind to both the strands separately and separate it apart. DNA gyrase, that is a kind of topoisomerase, it will release all the transition in front of the application fork. Why in front of the application fork? Because it is moving in this direction. You can see it is moving in forward direction, that is in front of the application fork. It also needs DNA polymerase enzyme, that is the main enzyme for replication and proof reading. I'll see, I will uh, make you understand what is proofreading phenomena. It also requires RNA primase that will synthesize an RNA primer of 8 to 10 base pairs of nucleotides. Anything you can say. It forms RNA primers. Ultimately, DNA ligase will come that will join DNA fragments or Okazaki fragments because the upper strand it itself are uh, continuous but you have to make the discontinuous strand or the lower strand to continuous and how it, this is formed it will be formed with the help of li ligase enzyme that will join the okazaki fragments together and how this dna is synthesized it is synthesized in the form of dntps so dna polymerase require deoxyribonucleoside triphosphate and it will incorporate in dna and how this DNA is being made. So it is a substrate for DNA synthesis as well as it also provides energy source. Why energy? Because it is containing triphosphate. It is having three phosphate group and this phosphate group is a source of energy because when it is cleaved, it will release a lot of energy that is required for the DNA polymerase enzyme because we have already seen that DNA polymerase or DNA replication process it is an energetically expensive. And from where we are getting this energy, we are getting this energy in the form of ATPs from DNTPs. So I'm sure this process is clear to everyone. Once I'll go with the DNA polymerase. So we have three kinds of DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase 1, DNA polymerase 2, DNA polymerase 3. But out of this, DNA polymerase 3 is a main enzyme. The first enzyme that was discovered by was DNA polymerase 1. This was discovered by Kornberg. So this is also known as Kornberg enzyme. So polymerization, ye tino ka kaam hai to synthesize DNA. That too in a 5 dash to 3 dash direction. All kinds of DNA polymerase will synthesize DNA and that too in 5 dash to 3 dash direction. So they all have ability to synthesize the DNA. What is exonucleus activity? Exonucleus 3 dash to 5 dash activity is also called as proofreading activity. So, what happened once this DNA is being synthesized? It may happen that DNA polymerase may get some kind of mutation. By mistake, it can incorporate some wrong basis. How, for example, suppose this is A here, it is it's incorporating T. This is correct. Because for A, we have opposite pair that is T. But for G, suppose here it is incorporating A. So this is a mistake of DNA polymerase. Here it has to be C because G pairs with C, but here we have A. So what it does, it is proceeding in the forward direction, but it has the ability to go backward. If we see is that mutation is there, then DNA polymerase come back and clear that mistake. 
that is what called as 3 dash to 5 dash proofreading. Why 3 dash to 5 dash? Because the DNA synthesis is being happening in the 5 dash to 3 dash direction. Suppose here is the mistake and DNA polymerase is proceeded in the forward direction, but he recognizes that mistake and move backward. This is what called as because it is moving in the backward direction. That is what called as 3 dash to 5 dash exonucleus. It is moving from 3 dash to 5 dash exonucleus. What is exonucleus? Exo stands for outside and nucleus stands for cleaving the DNA or the nucleic acid. That means the DNA will be cleaved from one end to end. Suppose here it is a mistake in the second base from last. So here it will cross first DNA sequence and again here it will come to the next and cleave from here. So it is cleave, cleaving from outside that is why it is called as exonucleus activity. So again this exonucleus activity is called as proofreading activity to correct all the mutations, all the mistakes that have been happened in the DNA and this is what the characteristics of all kind of DNA polymerases which, whether it is one, two and three. And lastly, I told you about the uh, DNA synthesis mechanism, how it is taking place. Firstly, the RNA primer is synthesized and then the DNA primers. So how can you, can you imagine this RNA and DNA, they can be joined together. Suppose this is RNA. Can it be joined with DNA with the help of lycus? Never. Why? Because this is RNA, this is DNA. Firstly, this RNA has to be removed removed by some kind of enzyme only then the okazaki fragment will join together exactly because dna ko ek hona hai. this is rna and this is dna it will make a rna dna hybrid and it will lead to some kind of mutation firstly this rna has to be removed because dna polymerase it was requiring rna poly primer but this rna primer is not needed further so this rna primer is cleaved with the help of exonucleus 5 dash to 3 dash activity so what does it do it removes rna primers that was synthesized by primase once all the process is done the rna primers that was synthesized by primase enzyme it is removed and then only the ligase will join all the okazaki fragments together so this characteristic is only a feature of dna polymerase 1 not other DNA polymerase. So again, a star mark point, exonucleus 5 dash to 3 dash activity is known for removal of RNA primer and that too it is taken care by DNA polymerase 1, not by other enzymes. So what is the speed for DNA polymerase 1? It is 1000 base pairs per minute. That means in a minute, this polymerase can incorporate 1000 base pairs, but this can only incorporate 50 base pairs per minute but for DNA polymerase third we have already seen it incorporates 2000 bases that two in a second. So you can see how fast this is that is why it is also called as highly efficient enzyme but this requires ATP in the form of energy. So we are completed with this replication process. So this is a template for DNA pink one this is a template and this is a continuous strand but that is what called as leading strand and again we have a discontinuous strand because the helix was opening the proper dna and the gyrus so we have short primers and that's why okazaki fragments were synthesized that is why this is a discontinuous synthesis of dna or this is also known as okazaki fragments or lagging strands so I hope this is clear to everyone. If this is clear, so can we practice question, guys? Yes, Reshu, I'm taking the lecture in English only. Sorry for the delay because I've just now seen your comments. So I'm actually dealing in English only. I'm first explaining the concepts in English and in between I'm incorporating Hindi too. So if you want the Hindi to be explained, so please let me know. I will explain that concept in Hindi too. So I hope I have cleared your doubt. Okay, Selva. So now we'll practice questions. So the first question you have on your screen is during DNA, uh, DNA car application, Okazaki fragments are used to elongate. The Okazaki fragments are formed. They are used to elongate. Option A, B, 
C or D. So I want answers from every one of you. So please answer what is the correct answer for question number one. Rishu Selva. Yes, Selva. Come on, guys. What is the answer for this question? So we all know that Okazaki fragment, they are used to synthesize the lagging strand. Yes, guys, because Okazaki fragment, it is discontinuous. Okay, so this is lagging strand. It was forming in the lower strand that is what called as discontinuous strand. Okazaki means small. So the small fragments were formed and it is also called as lagging strand. So the option where you can find lagging term, it is not there in first option, it is not there in third option. So you can clearly cancel out or omit the option number first and third. The remaining option are option two as well as option four. So you have to select the correct option from these two options only. So now we'll see what is it about. The lagging strand that move towards the replication fork, the lagging strand that moves away from the replication fork. So it was not moving towards the replication fork because we have already seen in the previous diagram when the replication was proceeding further, it was moving away from the fork. How away from the fork? Because helicase were releasing all the tension, it was breaking hydrogen bonds, but we were having the Okazaki fragments or the lagging syn uh, strand synthesis that too away from the replication form. So suppose this is a replication form, it was moving towards or away from the replication fork. But for leading the strand, it is always towards the replication fork. What is the replication form? The Y-shaped structure that you see now, this is what called as replication form. Jaha se y attach sorry separate hota hai. so suppose this is a y-shaped structure so this is known as replication fork iska ye dono joint is known as replication fork so lagging leading strand it is moving towards the replication fork there is lagging strand it is moving away from the replication fork so the option for this question goes right that is the option number d that is away from the replication So, Rish, okay, Rishu. So, I've already covered many uh, lectures like biological nitrogen fixation. I've also covered photosynthesis. You can also attend other biology and revision chemistry classes because this is the final and last day for Nail the Neat revision series. So, we have already completed. For 14 lectures and this is 15 lectures. So you can cover and revise all the topics that are there. So you can just visit the Biotechnica where you will find the Nail the Read revision series and this is the 15th lecture. And rest 14 lecture you can cover that is for chemistry as well as biology. So now let's move to the second question that is DNA replication in bacteria occurs. So guys, this is very easy questions. So if you are clear with all the doubts of DNA replication, I hope you can solve this question too. So it is taking within the nucleus prior to fusion, just before transcription, during S phase. Okay, Rishu, if you have any more doubts, you can just ask me, post your query in the comment section, I'll take it. So what is the answer for this question? So we have never studied nucleolus and its detail in DNA replication. So this option goes wrong. Prior to fusion, kuch samaj mein nahi hai. Again, this option goes wrong. Just before transcription, transcription ke pehle to hota hai. But it is asking where it is taking place. To maine abhi bataya is taking place in S phase because S stands for synthesis and synthesis of DNA it only what called as replication. So the D option goes right here. The third question that you have on the screen is the Okazaki fragments in DNA chain growth that will result in transcription that is polymerizing 3 dash to 5 dash direction and forms replication fork prove semi-conservative nature of DNA replication or polymerize in the 5 dash to 3 dash direction and prove 3 dash to 5 dash replication. What is the correct option for this? Yes, Rishu, so today it is the last day for this series. So we are coming up with new series that is from Monday. So from Monday, we are going to solve all the previous year questions of need. So you all know 
that NEET exam, it is going to be held on 17th of July. So from today, if we count the days, if we leave 17 and 1st, that is today, it is 1st. If we leave the 17th date and today, so only 15 days are remaining. So the leftover days, we are going to utilize it for the next series, that is the PYQ session. And if you'll come, if more number of students will come, if the crowd will be there, so we will definitely plan for the full length mock test. So if you are coming, if more number of people are joining for the PYQ session, so we'll definitely plan for a mock test series. So I welcome you all for the next series. So please be there on the time. We'll solve the mixed question that will be there for chemistry as well as biology. So we'll deal with all the topics of biology there and the experts of chemistry will deal with the revision of all the chemistry doubts, whether it is organic, physical or inorganic. And that will help you in boost your preparation. Will gain your confidence because that time you will be practicing questions too. So right, Selva, it is option D because it will polymerize in the five dash to three dash direction. Whether it is leading strand or it is lagging strand, it will always proceed in five dash to three dash direction. But kya problem tha wahan pe? Three dash to five dash replication hona chahiye That's why it was waiting for the helicase to open that DNA helix. But it was proceeding in 5 dash to 3 dash direction. It was proving 3 dash to 5 dash replication. You can see the option number 3. It is proving semi conservative nature of DNA replication. This option is again a right answer. But more than this, the option B is the correct and most suitable option. So you have to clearly and smartly pick the answer that is most suitable. So here the option D goes. So Taylor conducted the experiments to prove semi-conservative mode of chromosome replication. So Taylor, he proved the semi-conservative mode of replication in eukaryotes. Which organism is it? He took Vichia faba, Vinca rosea, E. coli, or Drosophila. Yes, Selva, it is always 5 dash to 3 dash. Rishu, you can also answer whatever you have uh, studied till now or understood till now. So you can answer for this question. Taylor, he proved semi-conservative method of DNA replication in eukaryotes only on Vichia Papa. So E. coli, it was used by Meselson and Stoll. So the right answer for this question is option A. So the fifth question is RNA primers are necessary in DNA synthesis because at any time during or after synthesis of DNA, only before DNA methylation process, only in the presence of DNA polymerase, only in the presence of excision repair mechanism. It is option C. It is option A. At any time during or sorry, it is option C. It is not after DNA synthesis. It is only in the presence of DNA polymerase enzyme. So whenever DNA polymerase enzyme is going to start the process before this primase enzyme come and synthesize the primer. I will solve one more question for you. One more question for you and rest of the question I'll give you for your assignment. You can just deal with the question. If you have any query, you may ask or revert back immediately. So the next question for you, you have on the screen is during replication of a bacterial chromosome DNA synthesis, it starts from a replication origin site. So how that they started? RNA primers are involved for this. It is facilitated by telomerase. It moves in one direction of the site or it moves in a bi-directional way. Okay, Rishu, no problem. It will always move in a bi-directional way because you all know that prokaryote, they are having only one origin of replication that too will be proceeded bi-directionally. So you have the rest of the questions here. So we'll deal with one more question, enzyme ka function, right? Very quickly. So helicase ka kya option hoga? Helicase matches with opening of DNA because it breaks the hydrogen bonds. So you have to match option A with 2. Where is option A with 2? It is there in 3 options. So just omit the option number 3. Just omit option number 3. Here you have to omit this option. Again, gyrase. Gyrase, it is used to release all the tensions. 
so what for what it is known it is known for unwinding of dna because it is releasing the tensions in the dna it will release all the tension and unwind so b goes with option 3 and here you can find three third option with b in only option 4 so this option goes right so how you have to solve the question i have already shown so this is a strategy for solving question you can do with all of the question that are there so thank you everyone today it was the last day of series but don't be sad because from monday we are going to come up with a new series and that too is very exciting and interesting that is previous year's questions we are where we are going to solve the mixed questions of chemistry and biology but the class they will be held separately chemistry experts will take the classes for previous year questions need that is for organic physical as well as inorganic chemistry but the biology experts will deal with all the mixed questions of biology and that session is going to be very interesting and exciting so please guys i request all of you to attend this session so if we find the more number of students as i have already stated we will come up with the full length mock test series so please be tuned and connected again we are going to start a new session or series from monday and that we that is a pyq series so thank you everyone waiting for you in the next session meet you in the next video till then bye bye take care revise all your concepts all the experiments that are there in the biology all the diagrams and again we'll meet you in the pyq session we together will solve all the pyqs for chemistry and biology wish you all the best again wish you happy national doctors day to all the doctors or to future doctors because you are going to be a future doctors wish you all the best take care bye bye